Hello friends, operating proximal femur fractures in lateral position is something that you all need to be aware of because often you are in a limited resource environment in which the fracture table is not available and you are left with an option to refer the patient to a higher center when you still have skills to operate such a fracture. Second, it is helpful in scenarios where the patient is hyper obese. That means you are not able to make an entry which is medial and posterior that is required for an unstable fracture especially those with reverse oblique fracture spike and the lateral position is going to be helpful in these scenarios when you have difficulty in manipulating your entry point medially in supine position so we'll be seeing what are some basics of the lateral position when operating proximal femur fractures so the problem in supine position i told you you have to gain a medial entry in a proximal femur fracture be it a complex it fracture or a subtract fracture so you see for gaining medial entry you have to go quite proximal so see this is the direction of your guide wire and the guide wire has to go quite proximal to gain an entry here and this problem is there especially in obese patients you see this is a c arm shot of an obese patient in which i was trying to palpate the entry area so the entry area is somewhere here but my finger is not even able to go till the GT. My finger is getting stuck somewhere here over the insertion of the gluteus medial. So lateral position is going to be helpful in such a scenario. And also when you try to gain an entry on the medial side somewhere here then you have to adduct the limb. And ultimately when you are adducting the limb you are actually adding to the varus. So you are stuck in between the entry point and gaining the proper alignment. By doing varus or adduction, you are actually bringing the shaft proximal part laterally. So even if you gain an entry point here, you will not be able to manipulate your guide wire towards the canal here unless you open the fracture and another problem and so in conventional fracture tables that we have in most limited resource environments have a metallic edge here and this metallic edge is actually blocking the direction of your guide wire you see the proximal fragment is flexed normally the shaft femur is like this but in case of a proximal femur fracture this proximal fragment goes into flexion and because of that you want an entry point which is posterior because entry point should be somewhere that should be well aligned with the canal of the proximal fragment if you are going anterior ultimately you are going to end up somewhere here that means you are going to make an eccentrically reamed cavity that will bring the proximal fragment in flexion when you do the nailing so whenever you are doing proximal femur nailing you have to create a track in the proximal fragment that is matching its alignment so this should be the direction of the track because the proximal fragment is flexed or alternatively you can reduce it perfectly then make an entry point along the direction of the intramedullary canal so you have only two options either to go posteriorly or to anatomically reduce the fracture first so in most of the scenarios we try to do close reduction only so definitely you have to go through a posterior entry point so the entry point should be somewhere here posteriorly because that is the direction of the canal direction of the proximal fragment so often your drill is getting blocked by this metallic zone so you definitely have some hindrance in the spine position and the, when the patient is obese the problem becomes more difficult you see you don't even have good space for putting your drill in correct direction the lateral position is savior in these scenarios now you see if we see the proximal fragment it is flexed now you have enough space here posteriorly superiorly anteriorly to go in the proximal fragment so ultimately you have enough windows according to the fracture pattern so if you have a sharp femur fracture you can simply go from over the top area that means somewhere here and if you have a subtrock fracture in which the proximal fragment is flexed you can make an entry somewhere here posteriorly and match the direction of the proximal canal so you have plenty of option in anteroposterior direction and from a superior area now if you see from the sides again you have plenty of direction available for a medial entry point so the problem is getting solved but whenever you are attempting the lateral position the first thing you need to check is your c arm views sometimes the metallic edge of the table is actually blocking the c arm view so you have to keep the patient slightly central on the table so that you are able to see the proper view. Now another thing, whenever you are doing nailing in lateral position, you have to ensure that the pelvis is tilted in anterior direction. That means if the right side is being operated, this is right side, the pelvis has to go downwards on the opposite side. So the anterior support should be a flexible one. What we do, we put a pillow here so that the patient 
can be tilted anteriorly. So you should not go with this position. You have to tilt the pelvis anteriorly so that you will be able to see proper view of the proximal femur as we'll be showing in the coming slides. Now, second thing, once you have placed the patient on lateral position, you have to ensure contralateral hip joint and knee joint are in extended position. Otherwise, they are going to come in the way of lateral view. You see the pelvis is tilted anteriorly. So you will be seeing a perfect lateral view of the affected side. But if you keep the patient perfectly lateral, what will happen? The opposite side hip joint will come in the way and you'll get a view in which both hip joints are superimposed. So always tilt the pelvis anteriorly and keep the other limb in an extended position. So here you see the opposite side limb is somewhere here. It is extended. The other limb is slightly flexed and the patient is tilted anteriorly. That means the anterior support is flexible one and a surgeon can tilt the pelvis anteriorly if more tilting is required. Now for APU, there should not be any problem. You can simply keep the fluoroscopy beam in conventional lateral position that will provide an AP view of the pelvis or you can say the hip joint or proximal femur. Now in lateral view, if you have tilted the patient anteriorly, then there should not be a problem. The lateral view will be the conventional AP view. If you have kept both the hip joint in same alignment, then you'll get a view something like this. But this is not good because both hip joints are overlapping and you'll not be able to see what is the alignment of the proximal fragment. So it will be difficult to see what is happening. Now, if you tilt the C arm in opposite direction posteriorly, you'll be able to see the hip joint of the affected side like here. Either you can tilt the C arm posteriorly or you can tilt the patient anteriorly. So both the maneuvers will be helpful in getting a perfect lateral view of the proximal fragment. Although these views will be sufficient, but if you want a better view, that means you want to see a view just like the fracture table, then you can do, you can simply try to do an inlet view in combination with this. That means you have tilted the patient anteriorly, you have tilted the C arm posteriorly, then you have tilted the C arm in an inlet view position also. Then you will be able to see a good profile of the femur neck as well. I don't require those views. The view in which the femoral head is visible is sufficient. So here the patient is tilted anteriorly. Then we are getting a view like this. You see the femoral head is clearly visible and this view is helpful whenever we are seeing the proximal fragment alignment and also when we have to see what is the portion of our guide wire. That means we are not going anteriorly. So that is going to be helpful. Now here let's come to some basics of these views. So here you see the pelvis is perfectly in line. So both the hip joints are coming in same fluoroscopy beam which is not good for understanding the alignment of proximal fragment. When we tilt the right side hip joint posteriorly that means this side is up and we are tilting it posteriorly then what will happen? So something like this will happen. So the right side or the side which is up is being tilted posteriorly. So we are able to demarcate some part of the proximal fragment but head part, neck part is still not clear because the opposite side posterior column is coming in between and the ipsilateral ischial bone is also coming in the way. So again everything appears to be obscured, it's not clear. But if we tilt the patient anteriorly, that is the position that I have suggested, what will happen? Let's see. So we are tilting the patient anteriorly. So here you see we are getting a good view of the femoral head, neck as well as of the proximal fragment. Rather it is going to be more clear because normally the neck is anteriorated and when we try to tilt the pelvis more anteriorly we are going to get a better view of the neck that is going to compensate for the anteversion also. So here you see by doing internal rotation of the pelvis or you can say we are tilting the pelvis anteriorly we are getting a good view of the femoral neck, femoral head and the proximal femur. So something like this has to be done before we start any procedure. Now let's come to an example. So this case was treated in lateral position. You see it is a comminuted fracture which is extending in the subtroch area quite unstable. It is going in varus. We have multiple fracture lines somewhere extending here also and this part is obviously comminuted, the LT is fractured, so kind of an unstable injury of the proximal femur. And also this patient is an obese one. So what we desire, we desire an entry point which is somewhere here, that means a medial entry point. And also we want a good alignment which is not varus, slight valgus is better, but definitely not varus. And in lateral view, we want it not to be flexed. So these are our target. So if we 
so if we have kept the position like this so something like this will happen opposite side hip joint and proximal femur they all are blocking our view and if we tilt the pelvis posteriorly then we are able to demarcate some part of the neck but opposite side bones are still coming so we are not happy with this kind of picture we have to do this maneuver that means we have to tilt the pelvis anteriorly then the fluoroscopy beam will be passing directly in line with the proximal femur of the affected side or you can say right side so here you see, so here you see this is the kind of view we get in fracture table and similar view can be obtained in case of lateral position also by just tilting the pelvis anteriorly and here you see i am able to palpate the desired area for entry point by my finger it provides enough space to locate this area unlike in supine position when part of the fracture table is going to block this area the proximal fragment remains adducted in lateral position so palpating this medial entry area is is easy in this position and definitely fluoroscopy is not a problem if you have started well and you will be able to pass the curved owl I try to use this curved all only rather than a guide by directly because I am able to create a good track with a curved owl unlike the guide by directly. So I try to use an owl only and then check the lateral view or you can say AP view for this particular fracture. So I have placed my owl here at the desired entry point. Now I have passed the owl through the proximal fragment. So the owl is going through the fracture at this particular position. Now the owl has been inserted only to create a good track in the proximal fragment and to pass the guide wire in distal fragment. But here you see the distal fragment has translated medially. So here what you can do, you can simply place a bolster underneath this area and by that you will be able to titrate the position of the distal fragment. Sometimes this distal fragment goes more laterally when the position is adducted. That means you see here this distal fragment is protruding laterally so it is going to be difficult to pass guide wire in the distal fragment so in that scenario what you can do you can simply push the bolster more distally that means you keep the bolster at the level of knee joint what will happen then this distal fragment will get slightly abducted and because of abduction this proximal spike will be angulating inwards like this by that you will be able to align the distal fragment more towards the proximal fragment so you can titrate the position of bolster proximally or distally just to manipulate the position of the distal fragment and to align the shaft part with the proximal fragment so that can be done so this is a simple example to show you what kind of setup we need <laughs> so here you see the other limb is in extended position while the limb which has been operated is flexed and we are able to give traction in flex position and if the limb is quite flexed then what you can do you can simply tilt the c arm perpendicular to the direction of flexion so if this part is flexed you can simply tilt this distal part of the c arm more downwards or distally and this proximal part of the c arm more proximally or you can say upwards so by that you will be able to keep your c arm being perpendicular to the fracture plane here the alignment of a limb is like this and the c arm beam will be coming in this particular direction so by that you will be getting good profile view of the fracture site as well as of the proximal femur. Now the advantage of this position is only to gain a medial entry point and easy manipulation of the proximal femur or all whichever thing you are using in the flex position because the proximal fragment is flexed in this direction and because you have enough space in this part you can simply push your owl in this direction or this direction according to the flexion of the proximal fragment. So here you see we have enough space for manipulating our owl and the guide wire can be directed parallel to the alignment of proximal fragment and the medial entry point is definitely helpful and you can use simple maneuvers like using cocker for self small hormones to manipulate the distal fragment so that you'll be able to pass your guide wire in the distal fragment now once you have passed the guide wire you have to keep the limb length proper limb length can be attained by giving axial traction in the direction of the flex position you see the proximal fragment is flexed so what you can do you can simply give traction in the direction of flexion only and then check the alignment again so here you see we have placed a homen also to keep the proximal fragment aligned with the distal fragment and this is the position in which you start reaming so whenever you are doing reaming you have to ensure that your direction is maintained 
If your reduction is not maintained, then the lateral position is not the alternative for open reduction. You have to definitely go for open reduction, put a clamp or forceps so that the reduction remains maintained whenever you are performing the reaming process. Otherwise, what will happen? You will create a track in the wrong direction and when you place the nail, even you try to reduce the fracture while inserting the nail, the fracture will tend to angulate because of the wrong track being created. So you have to ensure that the reduction remains maintained in AP and lateral view whenever you are doing reaming or you can simply go for a good alignment if your reduction is not perfect especially when the fracture is comminuted like here you see the fracture is a comminuted one and alignment is somewhat satisfactory the proximal fragment is almost parallel to the distal fragment so this kind of alignment is still acceptable because of the combination now once you are done with the reaming part then you have to insert the nail and again uh, you see the valgus issue is not there in this position but you have to ensure that your guide wire is either going central or slightly posterior so what you can do you can check a view in which you are able to appreciate at least the posterior half of the femoral head then you can check the direction of your guide wire whichever way it is going so at you will be able to see at least the proximal part of the guide wire here and also will be able to see the shadow of sleeve in good nails and then you will be able to check whether your guide wire will be going slightly posterior if your guide wire is going somewhere in this direction like you are seeing the guide wire going here in this view then definitely you are going anterior so you have to tilt the guide wire slightly posteriorly so that you are aiming this particular area that means either central or slightly posterior so that should not be a problem in lateral view you can simply check that you have to ensure a good lateral view in which you are able to see at least the posterior half of the circle of femoral head. Now coming to the distalocking part. So in adducted position, you will have a tendency to distal lock in an oblique position. So you have to ensure either you keep a bolster underneath the knee joint when you are doing distal locking so that your limb is perfectly horizontal. Otherwise in adducted position, you will have to go perpendicular to the limb alignment or nail alignment. If you follow this, you will be able to place a screw which is perpendicular to the nail but if you try to keep your screw vertical then the problem of this converging screw will be there because you are actually vertical but the limb is adducted so you have to ensure that the limb is either horizontal or you are placing your drill bit perpendicular to the direction of the nail so this was a follow-up radiograph of the case i've shown in the previous slide this case so this small fragment is displaced because of the combination but that should not be an issue because this is a separate fragment when we are not aiming for the anatomical reduction we are only performing the functional reduction that means the alignment of the proximal fragment which is the part of joint and alignment of the distal fragment that means the shaft should be perfect so here you see the proximal fragment is perfectly aligned this fracture fragment that means this fragment or it could be a trochanter fragment also that that should not be a problem that is going to heal by callus formation that should not be a problem so overall the limb is in slight valgus position and the blade is in inferior and posterior quadrant which is a biomechanically good position now another case because of the enough space available and the patient is obese we are able to titrate the position of our owl in ap and lateral view we are gaining the medial entry point here and we are trying to go slightly posterior when we are making the entry this kind of entry should not be done because this is anterior and the proximal fragment is flexed we have to prefer a posterior entry somewhere here or exactly in the midline if we are going to reduce it perfectly now here you see the purpose of this owl is only to push the guide wire in the correct direction the fracture reduction is still need to be done so what you can do you can simply again use the maneuvers like cocker forceps homan or even put a small incision and pass a bone holding forceps to maintain the reduction so the reaming has to be done in a reduced position but whenever you are doing reaming you have to ensure the ap and lateral view you have to check whether the reduction is maintained during the reaming or not like here when we pass the reamer you see the fragment got displaced that means this reduction is not stable it needs more stability more snugly fitting clamp to maintain the reduction so we used a loman clamp which has been shown here to maintain the reduction so the lateral position is not the alternative for open reduction if a fracture requires open reduction in supine position it is going to require open reduction in the lateral position also so you have to be prepared for that and once you have passed the nail you gently try to open up the clamp if on opening the clamp fracture starts displacing just tighten the clamp again 
and pass a circular wire because that means the fracture has tendency to recoil back in its deformed position and probably the nail is not matching perfectly with the canal direction so in that scenario the circular wire is definitely going to be helpful so that has to be done so these were the basic steps that you need to follow in case you are using lateral position for addressing proximal femur fractures there might be some unaddressed issues which you can definitely put in comments i will try to resolve them as early as possible thank you for listening